Hi there! My name is Ayman Maulana from Poto.net and today we are going to take a look at a work laptop with a large display powered by the top of the line AMD Ryzen 7 4800H, the Huawei MateBook 14. Let's dive right into it, shall we? The MateBook 14 features up to Ryzen 7 4800H processor with Radeon graphics. The Huawei MateBook 14 charges via USB Type-C and comes with a 65W power adapter as well as a quick start guide. You won't find much else here, but you will have everything that you need, so don't you worry about that. Now allow me to give you an overview of the Huawei MateBook 14. Now as you can see from the bottom here, you can see there's a bunch of air intake which is needed to cool down the 45 watt AMD processor. You can also find a couple of speaker grills towards the bottom on the left and right side. In between the display, there is a line which serves as an exhaust port where the hot air gets expelled out. Now this is similar to the Huawei MateBook X Pro. Now on the right side, you have a couple of USB Type-A ports and to be specific, it is a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. Now this makes it convenient and also perfect to use with a mouse or a flash drive. On the other side, we have a USB Type-C port, a 3.5mm combo audio jack, and a full-size HDMI port. Now a full-size HDMI port means that you don't need an adapter if you want to use it with external displays such as a projector. A combo audio jack will let you use the mic and sound with just one input. And a USB Type-C port here doubles as a charging port, which you can use together with the power brick that's included with the Huawei MateBook 14. Not to mention, it's pretty fast to charge as well. Now let's open this up and have a look at the keyboard, shall we? Now the keyboard itself looks rather normal. The buttons are big, and they have a slight matte texture on top. It's actually really nice to touch. As usual, the signature Huawei keyboard hidden webcam can be found right above the number 7 key. Other than being unique, it gives Huawei the advantage to minimize display bezel space. Now let's take a look at the display. Huawei has gone for a 3x2 aspect ratio display with no webcam in the way. It maximizes vertical space and gives you more screen real estate. And as you can see, the bezel is really thin from the top and the sides. It's also similar with the lower bezel, as it is thin and pretty. As we can see here, Huawei has gone for a glossy panel. So make sure to be careful not to use this when there's bright sunlight out there, because it's going to be hard to see. Now let's talk about the specifications of the Huawei MateBook 14. For this one, it is powered by the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H CPU clocking in at 2.9GHz with up to 4.2GHz turbo clock speed. It has 8 cores and 16 threads, and a 45W TDP. You also get a 16GB 2666MHz DDR4 RAM, Radeon RX Vega 7 GPU, 512GB PCIe NVMe SSD for storage. For wireless connectivity, you have the 802.11ac Wi-Fi and Bluetooth 5.0. As for ports, you have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A ports, you have a single USB Type-C port, a 3.5mm combo audio jack, and a full-size HDMI port. As for the display, you will get a 14-inch IPS display with a 3x2 aspect ratio, 2160 by 1440 resolution, 185 pixel per inch, 300 nits max brightness, 100% sRGB, 90% screen to body ratio, and 10 point multi touch support. For the audio side, you'll have a 2 watt stereo speaker setup and 4 microphones going around the laptop for a clear audio. Now, for power, you have a 66 watt Huawei supercharged power adapter along with a 56 watt hour lithium polymer battery. Now, for the most part, the laptop is made out of aluminum alloy and it weighs in a mere 1.49 kilograms, making this a very easy to bring around laptop given its lightweight. Now let's move on to the performance section, where we put the Huawei MateBook 14 through our usual benchmark suite. Starting out with Crystal Dismark, you can see that the SSD storage used here is capable of good speeds, so you can expect fast boot ups and also minimal loading times, if any. Now in Cinebench R20, 
While the single core score isn't that much different compared to the Honor Magic Book and the Huawei MateBook X Pro, the multi-core score is leaps and bounds ahead of those two laptops. Now this shows that the Huawei MateBook 14 is a solid performer. As for Unigen Superposition's 4K optimized benchmark, the Huawei MateBook 14 didn't do too well, but this isn't a surprise given that this benchmark is GPU intensive. The CPU isn't a problem right here, but you will definitely need a decent, discrete GPU if you want a decent score. A similar pattern can be seen in 3D Mark's Time Spy, albeit in this case, the Huawei MateBook 14 didn't look too bad compared to the MateBook X Pro and the Honor Magic Book, but it is still a far cry compared to our other devices, especially the ones with a discrete GPU. For PC Mark, you can see that the Huawei MateBook 14 is a generally all rounded laptop, which is good enough for pretty much everything that you need to do. Just keep in mind that for digital content creation, it isn't the best one around, but it should still do the trick if you really need it. For a better experience, you would definitely want to look at a laptop that has a more powerful GPU, but other than that, you should be just happy with this as it can do everything just fine. Now lastly, we have the PCMark battery life test, where we put it through the Modern Office Endurance test, and the Huawei MateBook 14 lasted 305 minutes on full charge. Now in comparison to the other two laptops that we've shown here, which is the Honor Magic Book and the Huawei MateBook X Pro, it didn't fare as well. But given what you're getting with this laptop and the value that it proposes, it's still a pretty decent score nonetheless. So I'd say it's pretty much within acceptable levels. Now onwards to our user experience section. The Huawei MateBook 14 is an impressive office laptop for productivity. It's thin and light which makes it ideal for the modern workforce which more often than not have a very high need for portability. The aluminum alloy is very strong and it's very comfortable to touch too. This makes up for a sturdy build quality for the laptop. The display here has a 3x2 aspect ratio which does require a bit of time to get used to, but generally text and images are displayed very well with good contrast and is generally very clear. My experience with this has been really good so far, as the added vertical space is actually very convenient as you can see more of everything. The typing experience here is pretty nice as well. The keyboard is fast and responsive, and given the size of each key, it's hard for you to mistype. It's a little bit on the softer side, but for most people, it should be an enjoyable experience, and this includes myself. The webcam here is a 720p HD webcam, which is okay for normal use, but the angle is a little bit odd given the placement of the webcam. You can see my double chin, and you can also see my fingers as I type with the webcam on. As a workforce laptop, I don't really have anything to complain about this. The Ryzen 7 for the Ender H can handle any work task that you throw at it. I don't think there's a situation you can have where the task will be too much for this laptop to handle unless you're looking at something that's GPU intensive. The touchscreen works fine and it's very convenient to have, but because the screen is glossy, the fingerprints will stick, so just be sure to keep that in mind because you're going to have a tough time cleaning it. The speaker works like well enough, but it's not the best. It's normal and what you expect from like built-in speakers for any laptop, but if you want the best experience possible, you might want to use your favorite pair of headphones. But if you still want to make the best out of the whole situation, this laptop does come with an Ahemic software so you can play around to optimize your listening experience. Now as a bonus, we're going to see what we can upgrade in this laptop since more often than not when we buy a laptop, we want to keep it as updated as possible so we can use it as long as possible. Now right here, we have a Western Digital PCSN730 512GB PCIe NVMe SSD with read and write speeds up to 3400 and 2700 megabytes per second. Now this SSD is fast and snappy and you can always upgrade this to a 1 or 2 terabyte drive in case you need more space. We also have the Wi-Fi chip here, which is the Realtek 8822CEAC chip. Now as Huawei themselves are spearheading Wi-Fi 6, you can always upgrade this with an Intel Wi-Fi 6 chip here and enjoy better speeds and stability. I was hoping Huawei would have included a Wi-Fi 6 chip immediately since they have a good array of Wi-Fi 6 router nowadays, but this is what you're going to be getting as a standard. Now overall, the Huawei MateBook 14 is a solid laptop for productivity. But whether you would enjoy it or not will really depend on what you are looking for in this kind of laptop. Now the Huawei MateBook 14 has good performance, solid build quality, and a surprisingly good display. However, 
The glossy screen means that it's a fingerprint magnet, the speakers could have been better, and it doesn't include the Wi-Fi 6 chip by default. The price is a little bit high, but you pay for the quality, as the Huawei MateBook 14 is a solid performer. We do recommend it for people or even organizations that are in the market looking for a good workhorse laptop. In case you're wondering, this Huawei MateBook 14 running the AMD Ryzen 7 4800H is retailing for 4,399 ringgit. And with that, my name is Aiman Molana from Porto.net and I'll see you guys again in the next video. Bye!